to a threat to the alliance. China's intimidation campaign. Political tensions at this volatile moment in history. of Dangers of a catastrophic conflict between the U.S. and Xi Jinping's China. Agreeing to work together against a common rival, China. Espionage. They want control of all domains, sea, air, land, space, and cyberspace. Free trade agreement. Controversial investment deal with China. China uses trade as economic muscle to get over the, the political. Intellectual property stolen. The Occident has made a big mistake. The Western democracies have been feeding a monster that now threatens to devour them. The Chinese regime has a goal to be the world's only superpower. The United States and the Allies have had enough. They know perfectly that if they don't take action now, it will be just a matter of time before China reaches its goal, which is inconceivable. China has never hidden its intention to take control of Taiwan by force, and that's exactly what the United States is waiting for. The White House is pushing Xi Jinping to commit the mistake of invading Office, the island. Australia, the UK and US partnership. Today we're taking another historic step, ensuring peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific and defense against rapidly evolving threats. For the first time in its history, NATO expanded the alliance's focus to include formally China as a threat. The invasion of Ukraine by Putin just 20 days after meeting Xi Jinping was very significant. The tension between Washington and Beijing is higher than ever. Human rights abuses and atrocities, PRC's ongoing genocide and crimes against humanity and other human rights abuses. Xi Jinping has removed the two-term limit on the presidency, allowing himself to remain in power for life. He's investing more than ever in the army, glorifying his figure, cultivating a personification of power. He has been eliminating all his political rivals. To know what motivates Xi Jinping, we need to go back in time. Xi was a red prince. His father, Xi Jiangsen, was one of the vice prime ministers of the supreme leader Mao Zedong. In 1966, Mao launched what he called the Cultural Revolution, a campaign of terror officially designed to purify China from capitalistic elements, but in reality it was to protect him from his rivals. Xi Jinping's father was one of his victims. He was removed from power. Purges from the party paraded as an enemy of the revolution, and he was imprisoned. The Qi family lost all the privileges. His sister died, and the young Qi was sent to the countryside in 1969, where he spent seven years working in an agriculture commune, episode that now uses to enhance his figure among the common Chinese. <laughs> After the leader Mao Zedong died, the father of Xi Jinping was readmitted into the party, propelling his son to climb the political ladder. If we think about it, anyone who was rejected, humiliated, forced to work nearly as a slave, separated from his family and lost his sister, would have turned his back on the party. But the fact that Xi Jinping embraces the party even more show how effective the communist brainwashing is and how dangerous this guy can be. Revenge and the sending of a country has been the primary cause of most wars. Xi Jinping lives with a deeply embedded victimism. He is willing to revive the Chinese lost glory. Taiwan is a lot more than just an island for Xi Jinping. Taiwan is the key piece to turn the table of the United States. The obsession of the communist regime is the economic and technological supremacy. By controlling the island, China will strengthen its grip on the world's economy and be the dominant power on the planet. Xi Jinping wanted Taiwanese to accept what he calls a 
peaceful reunification and the one country through systems policy. Similar to that used in Hong Kong, precisely, Taiwanese have seen what happened to Hong Kong, how people lost their freedom and rights. They were swallowed by Chinese regime. Taiwanese will never accept to be part of communist China. In 2015, former Taiwanese President Ma ying from the Nationalist Party engaged Beijing in a series of negotiations culminating with an unprecedented meeting with Xi. A year later, he was punished. The Taiwanese have elected the Democratic Party, which was founded on the promise of independence. Tsein Wen became the president of Taiwan and she was comfortably re-elected in 2020. Xi Jinping has no choice. If he wants to take control of Taiwan, he must invade it. The Communist Party's supremacy goal is based on a non-stop economic growth. But the Chinese are facing a serious problem. The country doesn't control the most important technology of the 21st century, the semiconductors. The building block for everything. Without the semiconductors, the country is paralyzed. The Chinese buy 60% of the world's production, more than what they spend on oil. And we are not talking just about the economy. The semiconductors are vital for the Chinese military. The vulnerability of China was evident when the United States forced semiconductors suppliers not to provide Huawei with the chips, undermining the company's ability to make devices. It was also obvious during the lockdown. China has failed to develop their own semiconductors. This technology is very special. The transistors that gave the chips their functionality are smaller than a virus. We are talking about a science fiction level. It's complicated, expensive, and it changed so fast that what is cutting edge today will be obsolete in five years. Only three firms are able to manufacture the most advanced semiconductors. Intel, Samsung, and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the SMC. Taiwan is the world's leader in this strategic industry. The SMC is the company that makes the best custom-made logic chips, and it controls 50% of the global chip market. These companies and their respective countries know that the Chinese want to get their hands on this technology. They are investing strongly, working hard in counter-espionage to keep China behind. Chinese Communist Party's aggressive plans to reorient and dominate the semiconductor supply chain. We're investing aggressively in areas like semiconductors and batteries. What pushes a country to go to war is the deprivation of an essential resource. China's regime is desperate. Taking Taiwan by force will give China control over the world's economy and a huge military reach over the Pacific. Beijing claims sovereignty over nearly the entire South China Sea. They have illegally built military artificial island, claiming also the control of the international airspace. Please go away quickly in order to run judgment. I am a United States military aircraft conducting lawful military activities outside national airspace. I am operating with due regard as required under international law. The South China Sea accounted for 12% of the global fish catch and holds about 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas and 11 billion barrels of oil. And it's a question of legitimacy. Both regimes claim validity as the legitimate and only China. 
By the end of the Second World War, the Soviet Union invaded Manchuria, northeast China, defeated the Japanese there, and gave the territory back to the Chinese Communist forces, not to the Chinese government. The same year, the civil war started between a highly motivated Communist Party helped by the Soviets and the Nationalist Army exhausted by the war against Japan. The civil war ended in 1949 by the victory of the Communists. October 1st, 1949. In Beiping, Mao Zedong inaugurates the so-called Chinese People's Republic. The Chinese government was obliged to evacuate the mainland entirely. It withdrew to Taiwan and the offshore islands, and thus began one of the great migrations of modern times. The fact that the communists have never been able to subjugate or defeat the nationalist regime will always leave this question of legitimacy with no answer. Taiwan's official name is still the Republic of China, the one used in China even before the creation of the Communist Party. The same thing goes for the flag. Taiwan is a threat to the Communist China. It's a living example that refutes the Communist Party's argument that Western political structures are incompatible with Chinese culture. The island is a vibrant and mature democracy. It's an example for the Chinese Democrats in the mainland. Taiwan's democracy is a nightmare for the Communist China. Looking back, it was naive to think that by adopting the free market economy, the Communist China would one day become a liberal democracy. For Xi Jinping, the survival of his communist regime depends on Chinese international supremacy. Taiwan's status quo will not last forever. The Chinese are waiting for the moment to attack. An island cannot resist the invasion of one of the biggest armies in the world. The Americans will not have the choice. They will go to war, because for the White House is not about Taiwan. The war's hegemony is in question.